Hello, 7th grade. Welcome to a video for Thursday, February 3rd, 22. Hope you're enjoying the drizzle. Get a chance to get out there, build some drizzle land, and make some drizzle angels down on the ground, and out, out and play with your sleds through the mud. Uh, not sure why we closed school, but here we are making videos. So we're on uh, doing today lessons 105 and 106 is what this corresponds to in the book. Uh, we'll end up with homework, be page 252, do the letters, and page 255, we're going to do everything. Um, there's two quick things to hit today. One's a rehash of something we've done before, but we just add on a tidbit. So the inches ruler is back. Uh, we've seen the inches ruler before. Uh, we should still remember that these big, giant, tallest marks are for whole numbers of inches, one inch, two inch. If I had more space to devote to this, I'd go with inch number three down the line. Um, at the beginning of the year when we first saw this ruler, I drew you a mark right in the middle that was half as tall as the whole numbers, and that line is for half an inch. Then we drew in some marks that were half as tall as the half, and split the halves in halves, and those were fourths. We had one fourth of an inch there, three fourths of an inch there, and that was way early in the book. That was just where they started. Was for with that ruler. Somewhere a few months ago then the, they decided to make their ruler a little bit better so they drew on some new marks they split all of these existing marks in half and they drew some new marks that were like again about half as tall as the fourths. So holes were giant, halves were pretty big, fourths were a little smaller and then they threw on a bunch of eighths. Okay, So all of these marks this is a one eighth line this is a three-eighths line. There isn't really a two-eighths line in permanent form. This would be the two-eighths line. One-eighths, two-eighths, three-eighths. The two-eighths can't stay two-eighths. We reduce always when we want, when we need to, to get a fourth. This would have been like where four-eighths would have lived, but that reduces to a half. So this is five-eighths. There is no six-eighths because we reduce, but there is a seven-eighths line, and that's where we stopped last time. So today what we do is one more time. Uh, we're going to split these in half and draw another line that's half as tall as the eighths. So we get these tiny little things, and these are all sixteenths. Uh, there's one sixteenth. The next little one would be three sixteenths. There isn't the two sixteenths because, again, reducing takes away anything that had an even on the top. We're always going to end up with odd numbers on the top, and either two or four or eight, or now 16 on the block. So that was three sixteenths, this is five sixteenths, seven sixteenths, nine sixteenths, eleven sixteenths, thirteen sixteenths, and then this last one right there, I didn't leave enough space, but that's fifteen sixteenths. Um, so you might want to write that down somewhere, have it, look at it, memorize it eventually, just to know what the different markings are for. So if we get past the one line, they're going to repeat the same kind of markings, medium for a half, a little bit smaller for fourths, kind of small for eighths, tiny little things for sixteenths. And then they'd ask you some questions about how far we are if we get to a certain spot. So if we got all the way to here, this would be one and a half. We can tell it's a half because it's the tallest mark other than the holes. So if I look here, we're past the one line, so that's one and a half. If I had drawn a little farther over here, kept my ruler going, and I had another pretty tall one, that would be two and a half. Later there would be a three and a half for all those pretty tall ones in the middle. If I go down a size, these are to do with fourths. The one fourth is the earlier one, the three fourths is the one that's more on the right. So this would be one and one fourth, this would be one and three fourths. When we go downsize to eighths, any of these are in the eighths families, but we're only going to use odd numbers on the top. The littlest eighth would be one and one eighth. The biggest we could go is one and seven eighths. Seven's as high as we could go and stay under eight. And then in the middle we get the three eighths, five eighths stuff. One and three eighths, one and five eighths. Then these baby babies are all sixteenths. Uh, if I wanted to count down, the biggest we could go was 15 sixteenths. So this would be 1 and 15 sixteenths. Uh, make sure when you're past the one line, you get the 1 remembered in your answer. 
Uh, if we counted down from 15, there'd be 13 sixteenths, because we're only using odds. Uh, 11 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, uh, 1 sixteenth. But when we would do all of those answers, any answer in this whole part of the world would be 1, and then the fractions that I was just saying. This is 1 and 7 sixteenths, or 1 and 11 sixteenths, or 1 and 3 sixteenths. That's just the way those go. If I did any answer in here, if I continued my ruler going, that would all be 2 in a fraction, and so on and so forth. The other thing that sometimes gives people up, make sure you put the unit of measurement. Anytime there's a measurement, you need to get the unit on there. Uh, so we need to make sure we remember to say inches on all of our answers whenever the ruler is labeled with inches. So don't forget to say inches. Uh, someday you're a grown-up, you show up somewhere at Lowe's, and you're like, okay, I need a, uh, an item that's, you know, 32. They're going to want to know 32 inches, 32 feet, 32 centimeters, 32 yards, 32, like 32 what? Uh, you can't just measure things with numbers. You measure things with numbers, and then you need to identify a system of measurement. 32 millimeters is very different from 32 inches. It just is. Uh, so that's our ruler. Second thing we're doing today is we're going to get back into some shapes, and we're going to try to find perimeters and areas. So, quick reminder of perimeter is the distance around the shape. So if I want to know the perimeter of a shape, I have to add the whole way around, all the sides, add, 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 add up everything. The area is the space inside. And to do areas, we've always multiplied some things together. So perimeter is always an add to get around it. Area is always a multiply to be inside of it. What makes these shapes a little different today is they haven't labeled all the numbers. So what you're going to have to do before you can figure out the perimeter or the area is figure out what the missing numbers are. And some of these numbers are going to work in teams. Anything that goes straight up and down, think of it as being on the same team as the other things that work straight up and down. So this is going straight up and down, and we don't know it. The 4 is going straight up and down. We do know it. The 10 goes straight up and down. We do know it. We need to focus on those three, kind of like a team, and figure out what we're missing. The 10 is obviously the biggest one. The 10 goes the whole way from the bottom to the top. So we have a grand total of 10 going up and down here. The 4 is only going part of the way up and down. This must go the rest of the way up and down to get things covered. Uh, imagine yourself like in a hotel somewhere. Uh, this elevator goes up 10 floors straight through. This elevator goes down four floors straight through and then stops for some reason because the building's weird. And then you've got to like walk across a floor somewhere to get to the next elevator and then continue on your way down. You have six more floors to do at that point. Uh, we've got six here plus the four there makes ten to be consistent with the ten we had to travel over there. We're going to use adding and subtracting to do this. We're not going to just look with our eyes because I am making no attempt to make these look like what they're supposed to look like. Uh, I don't know if this looks the same as this. I don't care. I'm not even trying to do that. Okay, This 6 doesn't match that 6. If this were really a 6 and I had like measured this with a ruler, this should have probably been like a 7. So we're not playing eyeball guessing games here. Um, my 5 here is really probably about the same as my four. I'm just randomly drawing a shape. I'm not trying to be precise with this. So you can't trust the numbers you see and just eyeball them. We have to add or subtract to make these work in teams. Uh, the acrosses also make a team. Five went part of the way across. Six goes some more of the way across. This bottom that we don't know goes the whole way across. So what we're going to need to do is use the five and the six to figure out this gigantic thing that goes across. Again, imagine this is like a hotel or something somewhere. Uh, if this hallway across had five rooms, and this hallway across had six rooms, then this hallway across must have 11 rooms just to be consistent with the five plus the six to make the 11. So that's our first job on these, is going to be figure out what the missing numbers are. Once we have the missing numbers, to do perimeter, we add everything up. 10 plus 11 is 21. Another 6 is 27, another 6 is 33, another 4 is 37, another 5, we're up to 42. So, perimeter there is 42. 
to do the area, what we're going to need to do is cut this into more familiar shapes. Okay? Um, there's two ways we could do this. One thing we could do is just continue this side all the way down and cut the thing like that. If we cut right here like this, we no longer have this crazy L shape. What we have is a rectangle on the left and we have a rectangle on the right. And we've done areas of rectangles before. So we're just going to do the, the two rectangle areas. Rectangle areas, we need to do how tall is it, multiply how wide is it. So for this rectangle, how tall it is, is 10. How wide it is, is 5. And we don't care about the 4. The 4 was too stubby to be a complete answer for how tall. Uh, we need a complete how tall of 10, a complete how wide of 5. 10 times 5 is 50 for that rectangle. Again, if we're thinking about looking at a, a building or something, if it was five rooms across and ten rooms high, we get fifty rooms in that segment of the building. Over here, uh, how wide across is just this piece? That's the six. How tall is just this piece? That's this other six. So what we get in here is thirty-six. It's like six rooms across, six floors in that part of the building. Six times six, there's thirty-six rooms over there. And then we'll add these together. If there's 50 there and 36 there, that's a grand total of 86. Notice on that, we didn't use the 11 to do anything. The 11 didn't measure how wide either segment was. The 11 was too big to matter. Uh, the 4 didn't matter for how tall this was. That wasn't the right number. When we do the area, not all six numbers will matter. Four of them will matter. You didn't have to cut it that way, so let me erase this and I'll rewind. I could have cut it that way. Then I've got a long rectangle for the bottom floors and then a smaller rectangle sitting up here for the top floors. For this bottom area, how far across it is, now we are going to use the 11. And how tall this is, we're going to use the 6. There would be 66 rooms, if we're imagining that building again, at this level. 11 rooms across, 6 floors high, there's 66 down there. Up top, this is another 4 height. It's 5 across, 4 times 5 is 20. If we add those together though, we still get 86. There's even a third way you could do this. A third way you could do this is kind of build on a room addition and make a monster giant size rectangle that swallows this whole thing. That's 11 wide times 10 high. If we go 11 wide times 10 high, that would be 110. This space that we didn't have originally drawn, but we added on, is 4 times 6. That's 24. But it's not there, so we have to subtract this time. If you subtract that, it's still 86. You don't have to do this three ways. You just have to find a way to get to 86. And there were three choices there. Uh, if you think you get that, pause the video and try to do this shape. Come up with the perimeter, come up with the area. If you think you got it, then hit unpause and we'll resume and we'll, we'll go at it. Uh, so once you're back, first job is going to be make, figure out the missing numbers. So all of these straight up and down numbers work in a team. Eight is the full distance from the bottom to the top, covers eight. This is four of that eight going part way. Again, if we're doing elevator rides, we'd have to ride up four floors, walk across a little bit, and ride up some more floors. The grand total is that there's eight floors, so to be consistent there, that has to be the other four. Four plus four would make the eight in the straight up and down team. Then the across is make a team. Going across just this part of the building is six. There's another bit to travel here that we don't know, but the grand total has to be 11. It's 11 to get the whole way through. The whole way from left to right is 11. 6 needs another 5. The 6 plus the 5 will make the 11 happen. And now we can do the perimeter once we get those missing numbers. Perimeter, we add up everything. 8 and 11 is 19. Over here we have 10, another 9. That's another 19 for the zigzag. So 19 for this path, another 19 for the zigzag, a couple of 19s make 38. When you add, you can add in any order you want to add. Just make sure you add them all. For area, you can make some cuts. You could either cut this way, 
So there's two rectangles side by side. Or you could go this way so the rectangles are more in a stack. Uh, if we cut this way, 8 times 6 is 48. And 4 times 5 is 20 to get us a 68 total. Four. If we wanted to cut this way, we get 88 on the top, 11 times 8, no, 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 44. We go 11 times 4, 444. We need to do how wide that zone is times how tall just that zone is. I almost used the 8. The eight's too big for that. Down here, we're going 24, because it's 6 across, 4 high. If we add those together, it's still 68. Uh, if you did the room addition thing and included that part, you'd end up doing 88 for the whole thing, minus 20 for the corner, it's still 68. And that's what we have going on. One small thing they always do to us on these, if they sneak in something like centimeters all the way around the world, perimeter you do with regular centimeters area you do with square centimeters. But if they don't specify a system of measurement and just do plain numbers unlabeled, you come back at me with just plain numbers unlabeled. So again, homework was 252. We're doing the letters. That has to do with a lot of ruler stuff. The letters themselves, I believe, point at locations on the ruler. I think it'll be labeled like A, B, C, like that, pointing on the ruler in certain spots. Uh, and then 255, we're doing everything. The letters have a couple of these crazy shapes where you have to figure out the missing sides. Uh, you know, this does, this has six sides, so I mean it is a hexagon. It's not a normal, thing. normally when you think of a hexagon, you think of something that's more like equally spaced around. But this is technically a hexagon because it does have the six sides to it. It's, this is called a regular hexagon, that's just a, sort of a random hexagon. That's it. See you tomorrow.